What's going on, guys? So today on this Shoki review, like I said before, we're going to take a break from the Gundam Build Divers kits and look at something new from Has from Bandai. And of course, it is a Full Metal Panic kit, I guess from Invisible Victory. I know nothing about Full Metal Panic other than teenagers in mech suits. That's a Literally all I know. <laughs> and of course, this is the M9 Gernsback, or Gernsback, or Gernsback, or I don't know. But it is the Commander Type, version 4. So there's the regular, or I'm sorry, this is the Commander Type, and then there's the other one over there. I only picked up the Commander Type. And uh, this thing is a little bit weirder because it's a 160th scale. As you can tell, it's a tiny box. It's about the same size as a smallish HG box from Gundam, so um, I know right off the bat a lot of people are a little mad at the fact that this is a thing. Like this is a one sixtieth scale, it's tiny, and it costs thirty five dollars as it is. At least this one did. Of course, you have the other optional suit over here, the uh, Arbalest. Uh, that one wasn't available, so I mean, it is what it is. You got a great, great box art here. You got a, a forest fight happening in the rain you've got water splashing everywhere this is actually very very impressive box art and come down here 2018 made japan greens back man dead nothing else important down there package contains one everything there bandai logo there armored mobile master slave slave system i don't know really hard to see there <clears throat> i don't know i don't know anything about the series i've never seen it so let's just keep looking at the box so if we come to the bottom, uh, you've got intricate settings, balance, stylish proportions have been recreated under the supervision of mecha designer uh, Kanetake Ebikawa. That's really hard to read. And then you got the Gra 2 monomolecular cutter, so you have a sword. And you got them on a stand there, and you got the XM-18 wire gun. So nice little thing there. You got the Gek B. I'm just saying I'm not... You know, 40 millimeter rifle actually looks a lot like a uh, like a lot of weapons that we actually do use in real life. It's pretty cool. And then you got a Gra 2 small cutter. You know, so basically it's another small sword of the knife. And you got all the weapons, things like that. Special weapon is that big thing there, the Graz. Graz, man. Monlitger Alice 2000 battle rifle. It's a big ass battle rifle. Is what it is. And you got gimmicks. Uh, let's see, pull-out gimmick has been adopted to groin, the groin joint block. <laughs> okay, so it actually has the ability to pop the hips down low, I guess, realistically. But that's got a cool shot of the suit right there. And come over here, of course, you have repeat of all the box art, no biggie. And come over here, and you've got information on the series. You've got the suits right there. Front and rear shot there. All the obligatory warnings, no no three-year-old warning on this one, so three-year-olds can totally play with this. And you've got 2,800 yen, which translates to about $35 here in the U.S. And illustration is by Yamamoto Hiroyuki. No wonder I like it so much. It's one of my favorite artists in general. So this is a very different type of kit, so let's go ahead and get right to it. By the way, new series, still upside down. Actually, I really like this logo. It looks cool. All right, guys, so here we have the Gernsbuck out here and looking actually pretty cool. I really kind of dig the design. Uh, a lot of people have compared this thing to the Greys, and yeah, I can definitely see that. Actually, I think it looks a little bit more like the Guy Rail, if I'm totally honest, from IBO. They've got the kind of thin shoulders, very kind of narrow legs, tiny feet. The tiny feet are a problem. We'll kind of look at that as we go. And in building this, guys, it's actually strangely Kotobukiya like it is definitely not Gundam like when it comes to the build so if you haven't built it yet and if you're planning on it 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 feels very different the plastics are definitely not the same type as you would get with a Gundam they're a little bit different the construction well similar of course because of the same kind of big mechanical humanoid is is in and of itself very similar i feel a little bit closer to something like a frame arms like this thing really reminds me of a smaller frame arms kit 
and I really do dig it. I do have the whole thing panel lined in gray. It does come in a multitude of gray colors, to let's just be honest here. So you got the darker gray for the um, for the frame and stuff like that. You got the nice light gray for most of the armor. You got this kind of khaki brown grayish color here. And yeah, it's just it's it's incredibly boring aesthetically just due to the lack of colors, but being that it's just a military type suit, I guess it's not that bad. Sticker wise, there's very few, if in case you're wondering. So this one right here is actually a sticker covering the crotch. That one's actually not too bad. You've got these yellow stickers right alongside the head Vulcans. They suck in the fact that they actually end up covering the Vulcan. And mind you, those are actually put in there all the way. You do get a very nice uh, visor sticker right there. Looks very pretty. And I think, I think that's it. I think that's all there was. Yeah. It's like, it's just that there's not a lot to the guy. I really, it's, it's a very cool suit. Now I tried looking up the series, tried watching a little bit and uh, it, it didn't get anywhere fast enough, honestly, for me to pay that much attention to it. But you know, even if I don't like the series, I really like the suit, like the actual kit, is actually very cool. Now, he has a ton of accessories, so we're going to look at all the articulation and stuff first. Now, the head is on a standard polycap system there, so it is a double-jointed polygap as usual. But, presumably because the cockpit is right in there, the entire head flips all the way forward like so. So just be wary of that when you're playing with it. So you can go all the way around like so you can look down that far you can look up that far you can tilt a little bit so you can get a quizzical look very cool um i thought for a second that the head crest moved but does not the details are a little bit different on this guy and i can appreciate it now the shoulder and chest joints are cool because you get some very spread out things but i like how the whole thing hinges up at the front so it really opens this up i mean you can see from the back here the whole thing just blah. that's actually a very very neat design i dig that and then the shoulders themselves are basically a polycap like so along with the ball joint so if you really really want to stretch out its ability to shrug get an amazing butterfly he can totally do that look at that that's crazy there's that enormous amount of articulation now the arms can go up about well that far until it pops out of the socket but the armor itself does move up and out of the way so you can get a little bit more if you need it uh, things get a little bit fiddly when we're playing with these upper arms here. And you can see the bicep armor does move, and I'm not entirely certain why, but it does. Maybe it's just because when the elbows flex, it can get out of the way. So it seems to do anyways. Sorry, my nose is running, guys. I just had breakfast. Um, the actual shoulder armor right here does have a ball joint connection here, and then a swivel actually mounted inside the shoulder armor. So you can get this guy in several different positions. I like the multicolored armor on the shoulder. That's pretty neat. You got bicep rotation. Really nice. As we already discussed, the bicep armor does move individually. You do get an incredible double jointed elbow allowing you to fold that arm all the way up. Looks pretty cool. And then the hand itself is just a standard ball joint wrist. No problem there. The torso has some ab crunch right in the middle, so pivots right there. Looks really good. Can rotate at the waist. Can he turn side to side? Yeah, he can lean. Very nice. There was something, I'm trying to remember exactly how it was constructed. I think it was just the way that this seemed like it would orient this way, and it didn't. It went front to back. And it just, it blew my mind just how different this thing was from a Gundam. And by the way, you can actually rotate the top and the bottom of the waist joint. Like, because this is a ball joint and this is a ball joint. So you can rotate them individually to really get some rotation. It's actually very, very articulate. Now it comes down to the hips. And it does have that drop down hip thingy that I was talking about where the groin, the groin extends. It's just weird. 
So basically that drops down, and I think that's just to allow it to kick further forward. If I can, if that's the only thing it can technically do, I don't know. I don't see a benefit to it. Now these legs, the way they are oriented, reminds me a lot of uh, like a Master Grade Gundam because you have it plugs in here, and this plugs into here. So you got forward rotation, and you got this way. And this is all right up here in the same hip joint. And then you've got an incredible double jointed knee with a knee armor that totally stays right there. I like this. It just looks good. Ankle can do a lot of things. Look at this. Hold on. Uh, I've never discovered exactly why this does what it does. It just does. But you have the... Oh, I'm sorry. These are stickers too. I forgot. The back of the Back of the calves are totally stickers. I just realized that. Okay, so you have this huge swing out here. You have the pivot side to side. You have a foot rocker way down here as well. So the ankle itself is incredibly articulated. The ankle armor does move on its own. So this guy can get into some pretty cool poses now the small feet will cause some problems here and there but it is what it is let's go ahead and jump over to all of the ridiculous weapons and accessories this guy has all right so right off the bat we've got hands and nice expressive hands like so. Now the only thing I would totally do to these, and I started to, but I didn't have a good enough knife at the time. You could separate the webbing of that fingers if you really want to. And since it is basically an HG size thingy, you just pop that out, slap them in there. No problem. And as kind of relaxed expressive hands go, they're pretty good. Not gonna lie. It definitely adds an effect. This thing, it, while it's not beefy, it, it definitely actually, like to me, it's more like an actual armor. It's not like a giant suit. And these things aren't as big as Gundams. They're, they're nowhere near. So it makes sense that they're a little smaller. Now, because I'm going to need the weapon holding hands, I'm going to go ahead and put those back on right quick. Okay, so first and foremost, let's go ahead and look at guns. Because he has guns. And this is that one assault rifle looks pretty cool and this thing reminds me i think maybe i'm wrong more like a m1 like a tommy gun like an m1a1 i could be wrong i like the nice kind of banana clip going in there looks really cool magazine for those who really want to go there the construction of this guy is actually very simple pretty much two-piece construction if i remember correctly yep and he holds a weapon just like any Gundam would. You just got to pull off the back of the hand. And I like this hand because it actually has the tabs front and rear. So it's not just the only side. Now this gun is a little awkward because he does hold it at a very strange angle. Come on. Oh. Yeah, you got to make sure you have the hand facing the right way, obviously. So... He can totally hold a gun. Looks pretty cool. Except, once again, he does have to hold it at a really strange angle like so. But, yay for assault rifle. Looks pretty neat. And I'm trying to remember if this is the... No, this is not the one. Okay, so he has weapon storage back here on the butt skirt. This one, if I remember correctly, is actually for the sword slash knife. But you get this one, and it's just got a T-shaped hole back here. You just insert. If I remember correctly, this is for this gun. Pop that out of there. Throw the back of the hand away. And you just take the gun and insert like so, and it actually does hold it kind of snug. I mean, it's a little bit loose, but it's also clipped in, so it actually won't fall out. I like good weapon storage. You guys know I love me some weapon storage. So pull that back out, because that's not the one I'm going to permanently use. 
this one is. And we'll switch over to his other gun. This big dog. And this thing is ridiculous. And this thing, it's just begging for some paint and uh, part separation. And it, it's layered. Like, this is a very intricate gun. I like the flip out, flip out buttstock if you need to extend it for some reason. That's pretty cool. He does have tabs right here that must be used for something else because there's no other stuff for this. Now, if you want, you can pull off this top part, pull that off, and you have a snub version. Same thing if you want to go ahead and pull that off. So you just have a much smaller machine gun. Looks pretty cool. This one has a more straight style handle, so you might be able to... Oh, dang it, I put the hand in backwards again. And you can just get that right up in there. So you can have them using that, or if you want to go ahead and put that back on. And I like that they added this. This is just cool to me. So you tab it in back there, you tab it in right there, and it helps It helps reinforce. It ain't perfect. That's why I think there's a part missing, and maybe I need to go back through. But if you have this buttstock under here, or if you want to flip it out, so that it tucks up under the armpit like so. You can look really awesome with that. So tuck that up under the armpit. Get this right up in the crux of the elbow. And man, that is a beefy, beefy weapon. Let me tilt the camera just slightly. I like that. I like the details of it. The fact that it's kind of a multi-stage weapon. Now, it I don't think it can uh, store... On the back, I could be wrong. You could always try to cram it in there. This guy's got holes everywhere, and you could probably find a way to peg it in somehow. But I think, as weapons go, that is a very cool one. And being that this universe, or these max from this universe, are a lot smaller than a Gundam, it almost it's a slightly more attainable weapon in my mind, especially if it's using live ammo, not like beam weapons. But maybe I'm wrong. Okay, so moving forward. Let's go with one of the more frustrating ones, and it is the claw and wire thingy. I forgot what they called it exactly. But uh, we've seen this gimmick a lot with certain uh, other kits. The um, there, There's several, you know, uh, like the, the crossbones has this coming out of the skirt, stuff like that. Now, this one does come out of the forearm. It comes out of right here. You have to kind of get a thumbnail under this tab on either side and pop it out and hopefully don't send it flying. Now you've got a little groove right in there and you just want to insert this right in there and then just kind of roughly set that right there and then there's your wire gimmick. Not gonna lie, it's not the most impressive thing in the world, but it can be kind of cool. Like turn turn the wrist this way. Like you could probably get this in a decent pose. Where he's trying to grapple something. Uh, it, it's a fun gimmick, and I'm sure the suit probably uses it more often in the anime and stuff like that. But I'm probably never gonna display it using that. But I like the fact you can do that. It's fairly simple not too invasive and it's it's fun i like that and of course now the piece de resistance the schwords slash knives so you've got little knife and you got big knife and these things are hefty like that is a thick knife now i did use some silver gundam marker on there and you're gonna have to be careful because the edges will scrape inside the sheath you just can't get away from it this is actually a very hefty two-part sheath i mean look at that now these have big old pegs on them like you can see right there and you can peg them on the side skirt like so you can peg them back here whatever personally at least with this one i like to have it in the claw back here because this will hold it very nicely and you just insert the blade like so i think there might only be there might be one way to put it in there we go yeah 
and that one can stay back there as for the large boy this thing is fun it's just a huge battle knife now the my marker was not cooperating for half the time I was trying to do this. You know, I had to switch to a different uh, silver marker altogether, and it's a rough job. But hey, it is what it is. The blade handle does go into the hand, no problem. You can do it. Well, yeah, you're not gonna force it through there. I swear, if I drop that on the floor again, I was gonna be pissed. But you can hold it very, very nicely, and with the way those arms move. Yeah. Very, very intimidating weapon. This one, I like to sling over the shoulder, though. Like so. Or, no, that's right. I did the I did this one this way. Because I think it looks pretty cool. Like so. And if you're going to go there, you can have him with rifle in one hand sword in the other mind you i realize it's backwards considering the way i had it set up but you know what i don't care it's all part of the fun right so he can be shooting someone over here and something like this nice Alright guys, so final thoughts wise, I really do dig these kits so far. Um, I don't know if I'll honestly pick up anything else. I kind of want to get the Arbalest just to see if it's different. I assume the other Gernsbach is essentially the same but with a different head and different equipment. Um, uh, for some reason, I, I, and it must be, I don't know, this, to me, even though the engineering is really well done, I don't see it for these prices. It's too much. I mean, here... Here's a graze from an upcoming review. You know, other than the fact that this was P Bandai, this is normally like a 1200 yen kit and has pretty much the exact same uh, mobility, stuff like that, and roughly half the equipment. I don't know if it's because it's a new property and maybe in the future they'll come down in price, but there's also another version of the Arbalest that is double, and I don't know why. It looks exactly the same as the regular kit, but it's double the price. It doesn't say P Bandai or anything like that, but it's about $65, and I don't know why. I don't know what's going on with it. So if these kits are in your budget and you dig it, or if you just dig the series, I definitely recommend it. But for the casual buyer, probably not. It is a little expensive. I mean, you're talking small master grade price for something that... You know, I, I don't have, at least at the moment, I don't have another 160th scale thing. So this is perfect grade scale. Perfect grade. Let that sink in. So as big as any perfect grade Gundam is, this, it scales with it. That's insane. So if a person is just sort of sitting right in here and taking up essentially this entire cockpit area... It, it, it's a little much for, for what it is, but it is a very cool kit for its size. The engineering is very well done. I do wish the, the colors were there. I get that this is actually just a very dull gray looking suit, but you know, I can't, you know, I don't know. Maybe it just needs a cool paint job. That's actually cool. It's catching that light in that eye just right. I dig that. So. Let me know what you think down below if you know a lot more about the series, which I'm sure plenty of you do. I'm just waiting to hear from Jetfire and a lot of other people what they uh, know everything about the series and telling me everything I did wrong in the set here. But <laughs> Oh, uh, I, no, that's a different kit. I was thinking that these little tabs right here would help plug in. That was something else that did that. What was that kit? That was cool. One. Anyways, so guys, if you like this video, if you like this kit, give me a thumbs up on this video. Let uh, YouTube know I'm doing a good job. That might be a good thumbnail right there. Just catching that glint. And of course, if you want to help out the channel, go ahead and hit subscribe. We're growing every day. I'm over 2,700, heading up toward 2,800 right now, which is freaking awesome. And of course, if you want to help the channel out in other ways, you can check out the Patreon right here on the screen at patreon.com slash reviews. Go over there and for as little as five bucks a month, you can see things early. Or if you want to step it up a little bit, you could even pick out stuff for me to review 
And if you want to help out in other ways and get a cool Shoki shirt, you can totally get one right here. Um, hopefully, a buddy of mine has been working on a new design for something later on in the year, but it's also going to be a shirt, so that should be pretty cool. And I think I'm going to be working on, with Ryan Liu on a new Lupus for Lupus shirt, hopefully sometime soon. I know the content is over, but it's for the winners. So I think it'd be worth it. But that's it for this review, guys. Thanks for watching, and come back later. And remember, as always, to keep on building.